Welcome back everyone. If you watched my first video, you'll be happy to know that I have some results for you. We'll dive into the methodology I used as well as the results of using large language models for time series forecasting. My methodology can be broken down into three parts. Fine tuning, generating predictions, and data wrangling. The results I will show you are specifically for sales data, all of which can be found on Kaggle. Let's start with the backbone of my approach, fine tuning. I decided to fine tune in an attempt to improve the zero shot results that I mentioned in my previous video. Fine tuning will also provide higher quality results than just relying on prompting. I chose GBT 3.5 Turbo as the base model because of its extended context length and ease of use. To create a fine tune model, I had to prepare and upload some training data. This was in the form of a JSON lines file, which had to follow a specific structure. Each entry in the training data consisted of three messages. The first was a system message which clearly defines what the language model should be doing. In this case, you are a helpful assistant that performs time series predictions, along with some other details about what format to expect from the user. The second message is from the user, which includes examples of strings that would be fed into the model. This was a collection of sales forecasting data. The last message was from the assistant, which provided the output we expect from the model. After creating the initial fine-tuned model, I did some training loss analysis to inspect data quality, ensure that there was a good balance and diversity of data and check consistency of the training examples. I removed the data that created the most training loss and created a new minimized loss fine-tuned model. Next, let's talk about generating predictions. This involves generating text completions from GPT using OpenAI's API. Here, the importance of tokenization comes in. For this model, spaces in between values and use of integer values were important in the tokenization process. After tokenizing the input string, we can feed the string into the function that generates predictions. Let's talk about the various inputs of the generating function. We have our fine-tuned model, which we'll have to call, our input string, the number of time steps to predict, the serialization settings to control sampling, which includes specifications like precision and bin corrections, which I spoke about in my previous video, the number of samples to generate, and finally, temperature for sampling. I think you might be curious as to what the input and output actually looks like. So let's talk about data wrangling. I created three separate processes for this project. A single attribute process that deals with sales and date only. A multiple attribute process that deals with date, sales, price, and stock. And finally, a multiple attribute process that includes promotional data dealing with date, sales, price, and a promo flag. The first step is to clean the data. In this case, this just involves removing all unnecessary columns and rearranging them to prepare them for formatting. The second step is to format the data, which entails putting the data into the format that will be fed into the model. The format that I prompted the model to expect specifies that each time step entry is separated by a comma, and each value within an entry is separated by a delimiter. All this information is then converted into a long string, ready for action. The output was a bit tougher to deal with. After writing the output to a text file, I had to account for the fact that there were multiple samples of each completion generated. I arranged the samples into a data frame and took the median of the sample completions as a point estimate. Now, for what everyone has been waiting for, results. The evaluation metric I used is RMSLE, or root mean squared log error. 
y is the predicted value and y hat is the actual value for sales. The lower the RMSLE, the better. Let's look at some zero shot versus fine tuned results for single attribute data on my first attempt before making any improvements. We can see that the fine tuned model performs slightly better, which is a good sign. We can also compare it to the results of using a simple ARIMA model for univariate data, which both zero shot and fine tuned methods are able to outperform. Now, looking at the zero shot versus fine tuned results, for multiple attribute data on my first attempt, we can see that the predictions are way off. There is definitely an improvement after using the minimized last fine tune model. We can see that the predicted values seem to be missing the spikes, which are possibly due to promotional events. This is where a couple improvements come in. Firstly, date needs to be in the correct format. Secondly, producing a specified number of predictions can be tricky, even when including the number of predictions you want in the prompt. So I decided to force the number of tokens in the expected output. By counting the tokens in the input string and dividing by the number of time steps, I got the average tokens per step. This value multiplied by the number of time steps I want to be predicted would then be defined as max tokens, allowing the model to produce the correct number of steps every time. Finally, and most importantly, including promotional flag to account for any possible spikes in the data, which the predictions seem to ignore previously. Let's look at the improved single attribute results. We get a pretty decent RMSLE after accounting for the date and max tokens features. Sweet. After spending some time looking for data with promotional flags, I managed to find one to test the model that included promo data. The improvement is huge. The results after implementing these changes are promising. The journey through using large language models for time series forecasting has been really enlightening and rewarding. By fine tuning the approach, refining predictive models and optimizing data wrangling techniques, We've unlocked a new cool way to forecast sales. I wonder what's next on the forecasting horizon.